Coming up, the new one from Jack Wolf Knives. I get a very special gift from my good buddy, Doug, and Exotic Blades Titanium Handles. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was from Mr. Ed DC six MH. He said, thanks for your collaboration. The agent 001 with Tim Kell at T Kell knives. It is now my current favorite EDC blade. Love it. And, uh, I just had to show that of course, uh, it just puts wind in my sails to hear how much people love this knife. Um, I'm, I love it too. It is pretty much what I carry all the time that and my, and, uh, my Nova two, uh, but speaking of two, the Agent 002 is now on order. You can uh, get on the books for this one now at T. Kell Knives. I'm not sure when they're releasing them, uh, but same handle, different blade. There's going to be a whole series of these Agent models. So uh, Mr. Ed, DC6, uh, MH, thank you so much for the comment. And thank you so much for uh, having bought this knife and carrying it and really actually EDCing it. I also love it. it it's 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 uh it's a great knife uh tim did an awesome job on it speaking of uh knives that tim has done an awesome job on my second favorite comment today is from uh, jared neves and neves knives and uh you know he did the fln karambit which i love with tim kelt <clears throat> but he's commenting here on a short i did about uh, steve Kalari custom kitchen knives he says i love having a high quality chef or kitchen knife I will go out of my way to use them rather than use the crappy, uh, crappy one now. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that. I know that Jared gets a lot of knives sent to him from various people, but I also happen to know that he has a Steve Kalari custom knife. And man, cutting with that knife is amazing. Steve, uh, before he was ever making knives, was a chef and a very outspoken knife commentator on YouTube and had a lot of opinions about geometry and heat treat. And uh, boy, he uh, he put his money where his mouth is with his knife, with his knives. So uh, thank you, Jared. Thank you, Mr. Ed. And thank you one and all for watching the videos this past week and making your comments. I seriously appreciate it. All right. That said, it's time for a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today was a knife I haven't carried in a coon's age, as the old saying goes, uh, though I, I'm not a coon hunter, but still, uh, this knife I haven't carried in a long, long time. This is the Spyderco Uliza, designed by Ulrich Hennecke, a uh, former German police officer turned knife maker. And he made this knife, I would say this was early in, this was designed early in um, the 2000s, I think. Uh, boy, now I'm not remember. I, I, I guess I would have to say like 2006 or something like that. And um, so the knife came out. I was uh, really shocked because it looked like many drawings I had been making at this point of uh, Filipino swords I'd love to see as folding knives. So this just knocked my socks off. This was the first knife I spent a lot of money on. And at the time uh, that equaled one hundred and seventy four dollars. I remember that. Um, I had to have this knife. I'm so glad I still have it. This one has always been a bit of a lemon, I got to say. And the only reason I say that is I've had a lot of Taiwan made, uh, or this is Seki City, I'm sorry. I've, I've had a lot of Spyderco's, uh, Spyderco lockbacks. This has always been the one that's the least smooth, I have to say. And, um, but, you know, I power through. It's a first world problem, no doubt. It's got no play. And, uh, it's just not, you know, there's, it, it is never going to flick out the way my Endura does. Let me put it that way. A beautiful VG10 blade with a deep hollow, uh, uh, well, it's a hollow ground uh, bevel, but also a deep recurve with that point uh, center line because you've got a pistol grip here. So there's an overall curve to this. Uh, just a great knife uh, for um, 4.1 inches and never ever spoken about <laughs> you never hear anyone show or talk about the Uliza but what a great knife this is man kind of it was sort of unofficially a part of the 
uh, people kind of unofficially aligned it with the police models. It, it was never really a part of the police series, but uh, it's kind of the same size as the police series. And Ulrich Henneke, the, the designer, was a cop or a police officer, Polizei in Germany. So, all right, next up uh, in my just jangling around at the bottom of my pocket, this one doesn't require a slip at all. This is the American Blade Works slip joint, very aptly named. Uh, I love this knife. Um, so the, the duty this went through recently, uh, uh, well, yesterday, I've had this on me a couple of days. That's a, by the way, that's a Magna Cut blade. Um, it's a little dirty because I was using it to, to cut rubber away from a knife handle. So first it was uh, uh, thick layers. This is something I had done, uh, something I had wrapped. I did a show on uh, handle wrapped blades last week. I've been tweaking some of my handle wraps and I did a bad one a long time ago that had, uh, first it had rubber that was already on it from the manufacturer. Then it had paracord that I put on. And then over that, like a thousand layers of electrical tape. So this took care of all of that, the tip of this. Uh, Took care of all of that nice and thin hollow ground blade very comfortable to use nice and small i mean it was like the perfect size for doing what i was doing because what i was doing basically was stupid it's the kind of thing that you might flay a finger open over and then later you're like that was stupid i didn't need to be doing this in the first place um i've done that so many times in my life i can predict when i'm in that kind of situation and i can kind of uh alter my my uh, alter my behavior a little bit. This knife is good for that because you have ultimate control. Uh, you get your finger all the way up to the end and and something actually somewhat reassuring in knowing that it could fold on your fingers if need be. No, I don't mean that like that, but when you're doing really delicate work and you don't want to stab into your other hand, it's nice knowing that the blade could fold into the user hand. So basically you're being very careful. It's what I'm getting at. I know that sounded ridiculously stupid, but uh, this knife is very thin behind the edge and super, super sharp. And uh, it was closest at hand and most mm, most suited for the job. So uh, there you go. I, I'm not always saying I do the smartest things with knives. Probably should have been using a locking knife there. All right, next up on me, on my waist uh, today for a change, and I mean that because I've been carrying this summer so much knives of my own design. Uh, I carried this, which I wish I designed. It's so beautiful, so nicely done. Aaron Bieber Knives, AB Knives 302. Is it a clip point? Yes. Is it a Warncliffe? Yes. Is that an amazingly wrapped Sukamaki handle? It is indeed. He does incredible work. Uh, incidentally, I like this coincidence here. Um, Aaron and I both went to the same art school, uh, just different years apart or several years apart in Philadelphia. But um, when we met, uh, we kind of hashed through things and we discovered that. And, uh, uh, you know, not only had I already been following him on Instagram for about a year and loving his knives, when I met him in person and, and, discovered that connection i was like oh i'm gonna be buying knives from this guy the rest of my life now i've only gotten one of them but he's working on a folder right now that is so cool i think he's done like four or five of them really beautiful frame lock folders he's also he also has some several other fixed blade knives i'd love to possess all right and lastly uh, for emotional support today i had the sevillana from joker and it's my first kind of legit spanish navaja and I love it. And something I've discovered about looking at this, it's a visual trick having to do with the horn-shaped, curved, extremely tapered handle, is it looks like the blade-to-handle ratio favors the blade. Um, of course, it doesn't. You need a little bit more handle to accommodate a folding blade. Oftentimes, it's about an inch. Uh, and in this case, well, I don't know what it is in this case, because of that curve, uh, a lot of the large... Uh, folders that I have, uh, incorporate, including like the Voyager series, incorporate that curve in the handle to accommodate the long blade. Um, it feels really good in hand because when you look at it from the top, it really bulges out towards the center here. Uh, even though it gets very thin towards the pommel, it gives you a lot to grip onto up here um, uh, around where this stag is and then up here something you don't see uh, up here on the front of the forward bolster something you don't see when you're just looking at it in profile like this is that the bolster flares out and gives you a bit of a handguard 
uh, in case you're thrusting with this knife. Um, but that the bulge here and then the curve uh, towards the back really make this very comfortable in hand for for slashing at the air anyway. And with that Spanish clip point with the hollow grind, Spanish clip point meaning a long kind of shallow clip uh, that extends over at least half of that blade. Uh, this is going to be a great thrusting knife. Uh, Navajas, just to recap, were sort of invented and perfected when Spaniards were no longer allowed to carry swords uh, in the street to settle their beefs. So they started making these giant folders. This is just a four inch, but you know they get very large. And and this lock here uh, is just a notch uh, that uh, a, a little tab that fits into that notch on the back of the handle. But a lot of the uh, older historical uh, or or custom versions have sort of a ratchet with five, six, seven uh, teeth in the in the tang, and it. Ch -ch 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 clicks in the lock as you open it, making a menacing sound and also locking that blade open and giving it a number of stops on the way in case that first uh, initial lockup fails. All right, this is what I had on my uh, on my person today. Kind of an unusual carry for me, and uh, it was uh, welcome. Uh, I had the Spartaco Uliza, the American Blade Works slip joint, the AB Knives 302, and the Sevillana by Joker Blades. Tell me what you had on you. Drop it in the comments below. Always like uh, uh, that inspiration, finding out what people have on them. And, you know, sometimes it's nice just to see a comment that's just knives. And I'm like, why is he just saying, oh, it's his pocket check. All right, next up, uh, speaking of knives that are great to carry, uh, here is the Hogtooth and Knife Junkie Nova 2. This is our second in the Nova series. And uh, this is a Kiridashi made of 154 cm. That's a 3.75 inch blade, super hollow ground, super meaning very thinly hollow ground, um, comes to that very acute point. And if you look at it like this, with the spine flat, uh, you will see that upward rising edge and that point is middle line. So you get, you get a lot of the benefits of a straight edge and a kiridashi style blade, but you also get that point in the center line for thrusting and such. Uh, so a special edition knife, this is ivory G10. Right now it kind of looks like just straight white, but it's somewhat uh, off white and bone colored. So ivory G10, you get the red liners and uh, the black hardware. This is the look for the Nova 2. Uh, each Nova series knife, we're gonna come out with them roughly once a year. The first one was the Nova 1. It was a recurve buoy, and uh, that had maroon colored handles with uh, uh, forest green liners. This special edition, of course, is ivory and red with that dark stone wash, kind of evoking the Japanese feel of, uh, of the Kiridashi. Uh, I've been carrying this a lot this summer because this short, curved, uh, gently uh, polished handle is very kind on my love handles because this goes in the waistband, uh, usually at three o'clock. Uh, in the wintertime, uh, I'll start wearing this appendix. It's just my own style of carry. But uh, over here in the summer, it's very nice on the on the part of me I thought I was going to lose by summer. Uh, that's kind of soft and uh <laughs> Uh, but anyway, uh, very, very comfortable four finger grip here, uh, whether it's in the forward grip with the finger on that sharp jimping or in reverse grip like this. So the pre-order is open for this. It is store.thenifejunkie.com. It is not an inexpensive knife. It is worth saving up for. We're going to leave this uh, pre-order open till the end of August. Then we're going to put our, put our uh, money into to Mr. Matt Chase up there in Massachusetts, and he's going to start making them by hand. And that is why, uh, you know, it's funny. I was uh, I was thinking, oh, it's kind of an expensive knife. And then I was looking at, uh, there's so many things out there made in factories that cost more that I got to stop with that. This is a handmade, beautiful handmade knife um, and a collaboration. So uh, enjoy it if you, if you wish. If not, uh, it'll be on the channel for you to look at in the future. All right. Lastly, in this opening section, I want to talk about the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife for August. This month, it's coming oh, a week later than usual. Usually, it's the third week, uh, but we have a uh, sudden onset vacation 
um, in the in the offing. So we're gonna we're gonna do that for a couple of days, and that will preclude Thursday night knives tomorrow night. So uh, next week we will be giving away this really cool knife. This reminds me of a shark. Uh, this totally looks like a great white shark to me. I, I guess you got the gills here, a little more fewer more gills than a shark has, but that's for super aspiration. Uh, that that recurve tanto is just insane it is a very tall blade it's almost two inches in height uh it's gently hollow ground and very very thin uh, of course that front is like a chisel with an extra extra relief edge on it this thing is really 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 sharp and very comfortable in hand that big broad blade but the handle is uh more slender and and feels really excellent in the hand this is by rs blade works right yeah um and so they have i think they have one called the rs chaos this is the mini paragon and look at this i like this very nice um tan canvas micarta the crowned um what do you call this thing backspacer is also of that micarta and and it stands a little bit proud and it's really nice feels good Lots of jimping, lots of uh, contouring, and just a really super cool knife. This one comes courtesy of Dave, OG Blade Reviews. Thank you so much, Dave. We appreciate this and cannot wait to pass this along to one lucky gentleman junkie uh, next Tuesday, or <laughs> next Thursday, August 22nd, 2024. All right. Well, uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to look at some new knives coming out uh, from some of our favorite companies. But before we do, be sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell that sends you a notification every time the show uploads. But also, you can download the show to your favorite podcast app. If you don't get to finish it while you're sneaking a minute on YouTube at work, you can listen to it on the way home in the car. Uh, just download it to one of these podcast apps. All right, still to come. Knife Life News. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast, and now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. New from one of my favorite high-value brands, Senkut, and one of my favorite Polish knife designers, and there are a lot of them, oh, stop hell, is the new neck knife called the Texo. This is the Senkut Texo. Uh, this is a pretty cool little knife. It reminds me of something a, a modern-day space Viking might have around his necklace right next to his Thor hammer. Uh, it's a 1.97-inch 9CR18 MOV, uh, sort of angular Warncliffe with that helical handle, like the handle looks like, uh, maybe maybe this space Viking is carrying around human DNA uh, to spread because uh, some calamity has happened on uh, on Nuevo Earth. So he's like he's like out there. He's got his uh, the the DNA strand of humanity saved in that helical handle. All right, very cool neck knife. You know I like neck knives a lot, and this one seems like without the goofy. I'm sorry, Senkut and Savivi. It's very generous that you put uh, these lanyards on all your fixed blades. I can't wait to take them off uh, when I get them, but some people dig them. So uh, without that, uh, this all day long, maybe even with a little bit of jute wrap on it. But <clears throat> anyway, 1.97 inches, 9 CR18 MOV. Uh, it is uh, six, I'm sorry, 0.68 ounces, so super light. That's even with the lanyard and the sheath. And uh, it's the only fixie now in the Sen Cut lineup, the Waxahachi. No, no, the, the, what was it called? Not the Waxahachi. I think the Chattahoochee, whatever it was called. I have it, very nice clip point. They have discontinued that, and, and that's unfortunate. It had the, sort of had the cogent blade in a fixed manner with a nice neutral handle. <clears throat> so now the Sen Cut Texo, only fixed blade in the Sen Cut lineup, but it's a looker and it looks like it'll be uh, pretty useful with that two inch blade and that super, super light weight. All right, next up, speaking of very useful, Rosecraft Blades has just been, man, they had just been pumping them out and I love it. Uh, Rosecraft now has the Tanasi Lake. Jack. Uh, the Tanasi Lake is a teardrop uh, shaped handle 
uh, blade or uh, knife with a single blade drop point. Nice broad D2 2.8 inch drop point with a swedge. And it is a, a honey. I mean, that is beautiful. Those bone covers, they're calling that Bora Bora Blue bone covers. So Bora Bora, is that the South Pacific? Um, I guess we would presume that's what the water looks like there, though I've been to Fiji, oddly enough, in the South Pacific, and the water did not look like that. It was rough uh, and and uh, not the kind of place I, I wanted to necessarily swim, but uh, that, that uh, Bora Bora blue bone cover there it looks like someplace i'd want to swim that beautiful blue color uh i've seen this on a number of different channels already and man it looks cool uh you know with with me drop points i'm not as crazy about but i i, I like this thing and it reminds me a little bit of uh, uh the jack wolf with the teardrop shape i mean similar that one has a uh, almost a, a cartoonishly broad blade and i mean that in a good way uh, it has a super belly on their version. Uh, double fluted bolsters here. And uh, as I mentioned, D2 blade. This is available now. Rosecraft with all of their new traditionals. You know, remember they dumped a whole bunch, dumped. They dropped a whole bunch of um, uh, modern blades, I think three. And then they came out with like four or five new traditionals. And that's what I like Rosecraft for personally, though I know, especially through watching uh scabs videos that whether it's the traditional or the modern d2 uh, you know, uh folders i'm sorry <laughs> whether it's the traditional or the modern models of folders coming out from rosecraft their d2 steel is super well heat treated uh they've just been used and used and used on really hard tasks day after day for more than a month without being stropped so that's a pretty good indication of a good heat treat all right. Next up, Tactile Knife Company. Now, we've had Michael Miller on the show a number of times, and most recently, he he told us about this project, so it's really great to see it come to fruition. This is a passion project for sure uh, by Michael Miller himself at, uh, of Tactile Knife Company. and He got a Terzuola in 1998, or was it 87, I think, 1987 Bob Terzuola Mariner blade and he wanted to always wanted to make his own version of it and that's what they've done with the mariner 2 bringing back this classic we all we all know the atcf the super aggressive looking uh, folder uh that bob terswell is most known for but this little known uh, uh maritime sort of uh, sailing knife um was a, a big favorite of michael miller so he brought it back out 2.98 inches of magna cut it's a little bit smaller it's a titanium liner lock uh, they replaced the standard screw uh, setup stamped um, emerson style clip for a sculpted clip with terzuola's uh, dragon logo on it and a hidden lanyard uh, hole that's up there in the in the backspacer very very nice looking knife i i I'm I'm really happy to see that this project has finally come out and people are buying it. Actually, the there, here's a, a comparison to the original, which is to the left, and and the new one on the right. And uh, it's already sold out, but they're gonna do a whole another run of them. So pretty exciting for them and for Bob Terzuola, uh, no doubt. All right, last up, I uh, just wanted to let you know I've been showing this one off a lot. I love this work. I haven't been showing it off that much, but I've been using it a lot. This is the Work Sharp uh, Field Sharpener. You've got two different grits of diamond stone, and then you have a strop, and then you have um, a serration uh, ceramic, and then you have a rotating ceramic here that has fine, coarse, and and fish hook, and then you have a strop. Really great, small, all-in-one little field sharpener. Well, they've come out with, a Workshop has come out with something even more handy. It's an EDC sharpener. Uh, folds in the middle. It's a, uh, it's got a pocket clip, so you can just pop it in your pocket. Uh, it opens up like this, and on one side, it's got a 400 grit diamond plate, which is, uh, I guess, this right here. And then on the other side, it has a ceramic, um, uh, ceramic plate there. Now, it gives you angle guides. And what I mean by that is if you look here on this work, work sharp, you'll see that the approach to the stone here is at a 20 degree angle. So if you hold the blade like that and drag it across like that, it's going to give you basically a 20 degree angle. 
on this uh, folding field sharpener here, this new one, they give you a 20 degree angle with the diamond plate, but a 25 with the ceramic. And I guess that's to knock off any burr you might create. Um, but I thought that was interesting because <clears throat> I'm not sure if they they do that on this one here. Pocket clip, 4.6 ounces and available now. So not the lightest little thing, but I guess uh, that ceramic is probably a bit weighty. All right, that's it for Knife Life News this week. Lots of cool stuff coming out. Always cool stuff coming out. I think that's great, especially with companies like Sencut, Civivi, Rosecraft. They're not they're not that seasonal. Of course, they have big seasonal releases at the shows, but they kind of keep uh, dropping them as the year goes, and I, I like that. All right, coming up, we're going to do the state of the collection and check out some of the new knives coming through uh, here. But before we do, um, I want to urge you, if you're interested, to go on over to Patreon, theknifejunkie.com slash Patreon, and become a patron. Uh, you could win a knife just like this or this very knife. Uh, every month we do a knife giveaway uh, for the Gentleman Junkies. Uh, on on the Patreon, <laughs> and it's always fun. We spin the wheel of destiny, and uh, that's a random number generator, basically, that chooses who wins. And uh, I send it to you, and then we turn it over. And next month, that's another knife. And oftentimes, many many uh, times, uh, these are knives donated by Dave. I appreciate you, Dave. OG Blade Reviews. Other times, they're knives given to us by other makers and such. So. Uh, be sure to go check out thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon or scan the QR code. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, thenifejunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So new from Jack Wolf Knives for August 2024 is the second iteration of the Venom Jack. Uh, Venom Jack, I say this with every one of their knives, so just bear with me. But it's one of my favorites uh, because you have an amazing uh, and very, very comfortable trapper style handle with a broad, beautiful Warncliffe blade but all that said this one just takes the cake for me now uh, I'm I'm very lucky because Ben sends me these when they when they release and sometimes he asks me which one I'd like and this time I said oh I want the titanium the titanium one has a really co cool setup no bolsters no full bolsters just sort of a random napped pattern and I'm into flint napping right now I think it's very interesting I like watching people do it on YouTube so I thought that would be cool to have he was all out of that and so he sent me this and man alive I'm so glad he did because this is a this is a new look for Jack Wolf knives you've got a very dark acid stone wash blade again uh, deeply hollow ground full height hollow grind so convex on both sides all the way up to the spine so super sharp and super slicey uh, also has a very large and generous uh, sharpening choil there so you can sharpen this thing for a long time and still get a lot of life out of that blade but it's got a downward canted edge so that puts the tip down a little bit lower which makes it uh, perfect for uh, pull cuts and those kind of utility uh, detailed utility cuts and that downward angle of that straight edge also accelerates cutting um, much like a recurve uh, does okay all of that is built into this design we saw it on the last one and i loved the last one with its machine ground satin blade and uh, cheerful sort of blue um, carbon fiber that i had on mine but this one looks like an antique to me instant antique that dark acid stone wash on the bolsters and on the blade and then this stormy tempestuous dark matter red carbon fiber this is just beautiful and the thing is is it wouldn't have been my first choice but i'm glad i'm glad it worked out this way because uh this knife is like instantly compelling to me it feels like it already has soul you know you know a knife after a while it it it, it gathers what we loosely call soul of course it's not an actual soul but it 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 wears in and it um you know like a nice old pair of jeans or something and 
except a pair of jeans that you don't have to throw out in a couple of years because it's going to fall apart. This, of course, gets handed down to the grandchildren. It just keeps going. Um, but the way it looks, it's like an instant heirloom. I know, I'm, I'm totally smitten with this colorway. And uh, you know it because I hate the term colorway, but I'll use it for this. Triple fluted bolster up front, double fluted bolster in the back, and super, super comfort. Uh, they all look cool. The green uh, the green one with the black blade and the black uh, bolsters, that looks very cool. Again, that random napped pattern. Titanium is gorgeous, and there's another carbon fiber. But this one, look at this one. I, I highly, highly recommend you check this one out. Uh, S90V blade steel. Uh, really excellent walk and talk as usual super crisp at all stations and a very seven and a half eight pull nice stout pull <clears throat> you can pinch it and works great man this is a really really beautiful uh slip joint knife if that is your thing and of course it always ships with a beautiful and uh i guess the word is sumptuous leather slip all right next up this one is cool. This is a gift from Doug Bowl. Doug, thank you so much. I was talking about uh, uh, patrons, uh, patrons and such. Uh, Doug is uh, comes to Thursday Night Knives, and he's also a patron, and I really appreciate him. And he sent me this to keep, and it is so cool. This is an a Sog Sog Winder Two. Uh, this I believe may have been a part of his duty belt at one time super sharp this is an old school sog as you can tell uh comes in a pouch no pocket clip comes in a pouch you got those steel polished steel bolsters uh very pronounced knurling on this rubbery craton uh thick and hafted back lock here man it's all so smooth and and beautiful kind of put together a little bit more like a traditional knife because it's pretty old i would imagine this is turn of the century or or mid mid 90s actually what am i talking about this is probably mid to early 90s because uh, this one i got in 1991 and i believe this one they only ran for one year and i don't remember what this one's called uh but this is this is kind of what sog folders looked like in the early 90s i guess late 80s early 90s now the the uh rubber on both of these are starting to get a little bit you know you kind of feel it a little bit residuey, but um, these are not a everyday carries for me. This one was in 1991, uh, but so I'm not worried about them, you know, disintegrating or anything like that. But man, what a cool, cool knife! Thank you so much, Doug. Uh, that is Razor Sharp OS 6, made in Seki City, Japan. And uh, you know, I imagine OS 6 back in uh, the early 90s was some pretty high tech steel. Sog was a pretty big, uh, not big uh, company, but a pretty, um, you know, people spent a lot of money for their knives. They were knives for people in the know, if you will. And uh, so very, very happy to have that. Doug, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, sir. Your generosity is greatly appreciated and uh, definitely adds something to my collection. All right. Next up um, from my now, this is being added to my um Dirk Pinkerton collection. Um, and I just got sent these from artists and cutlery and, and Dirk and they're so sweet. Okay. So you've seen this, I've shown this knife off a lot because I love it. And I had the prototype here, but this is now the production version. This is the Banjara uh, made by artisan cutlery and designed by Dirk Pinkerton, a middle East inspired sort of clip point. You say middle Eastern clip point. I say it because from from the thumb ramp down it seems like a clip uh, but he does a lot of that sort of cultural mashup with his knife designs i have another knife uh, uh the razorback that was uh made by him in his own shop and it is a mix-up of a bowie knife a fighting bowie like hell's bells style bowie and a persian style like conjar so he does a lot of that so yeah nice persian blade here persian clip point blade that's s90v S90V blade steel. Now, if you saw me showing off the prototype, you know this looks a little bit different. Here we have a nice satin on that S90V. The other one, I believe, was stonewashed or blasted. And then here the titanium is a brighter, 
mm, I don't want to say polished, but it's got sort of a sort of a semi polish on it or a um a what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of a satin polish, not satin like you see on the blade, shiny, but satin like you get uh, out of house paint or um or titanium. <laughs> Uh, fits the hand beautifully and uh, really excellent, excellent action. Action that's set up for all. Uh, that that D10 is set up for great middle finger flicking, for slow rolling with the thumb, for flicking it with the flipper. Uh, just a great, great all around knife and a luxury. This is definitely a luxury addition to the collection. I'm really psyched to have it. And the funny thing is, is uh, I sent back the prototype and I was kind of like, whoa, whoa. And he, and he said, oh, you could have kept the prototype as long as you want, you know, just to check it out, like no rush to send it back, but you'll be getting the production one. And it came like two days later. So <laughs> lucky me, lucky me. I am a lucky man. All right. So that's the artisan Banjara. This one also came in the box and this has stolen my heart guys and gal. Uh, this is the also designed by Dirk Pinkerton, also made by Artisan Cutlery. This is the Kami, not Kami like Kami Bastard, but Kami like Kami the Knife Maker from India. Kamis are the, is the name of the people who make uh, kukris. So this is uh, a sort of a tip of the hat to that with that deep recurve, the downward uh, pointed blade. You do still have a centerline point there, though, which is excellent for thrusting. But look at that extreme belly and that really nice recurve. I mean, he went out of his way to re-recurve that. And uh, I think it's gorgeous. I carried it all day yesterday, which is uh, when I got it. And uh, it's nice and light. It's thin, nice and slender. So you have on one side this heavily chamfered titanium frame lock with the, with the really nice uh, micro milling in it. Can you see the micro milling? There you go. The micro milling is only on the chamfers. It's like a pin striping. And then you have a nice sculpted clip, a sort of gear pattern backspacer, and then a nice and thin micarta only show side. So it's nice and light, nice and thin, feels great in hand. This The ergonomics of this are crazy. Uh, by the way, the ergonomics, uh, maybe I mentioned on this, are also really, really nice. Um, you know, we I, I tend to go off about Dirk's cool blade designs, but... Uh, I don't mean to skip over the fact that they're so comfortable in hand. And this one here, the um, the Kami, is extremely comfortable. The the uh, the thumb ramp feels great. The jimping is is aggressive, and it really does catch your hand or your thumb. And uh, it's sort of standard jimping, unlike uh, oftentimes you'll see a Dirk Pinkerton will do scoop jimping coming in from either side, which is also very cool. It's kind of evocative of traditional file work uh, but this is sort of straightforward and uh, on this one it works really well look at that blade god that's beautiful uh, but also look at the handle with this bird's beak back here such excellent ergonomics in reverse grip great place to put your thumb right there i'm a big fan uh, of that having a place to put your thumb but also when you're in standard grip it really holds uh the pinky you know for resisting centrifugal force and and the other kind of forces you engage when you're uh slashing with a knife like this so just a beautiful knife i mean a great all-arounder that's like a 3.6 inch blade and you could just use this as your edc but true to dirk pinkerton's uh sort of design philosophy all edcs are weapons and all weapons should be edcs now he never i don't know if he said it just like that but we've talked about it quite a bit and and uh, he's always thinking of the defensive purposes um, built into an EDC. And that, man, that is gorgeous. The Artisan Cutlery Kami by Dirk Pinkerton. Thank you, Artisan Cutlery and Dirk, for sending those to me. Uh, they will be cherished additions to both my Artisan, my Exotic Blade, and my um, Dirk Pinkerton collections. All right. Speaking of exotic blades, let's get to this. Now, what am I talking about? Exotic blades, titanium handles. I was kind of looking at my collection and noting just that, how I have a lot of titanium uh, handled knives that have unique and interesting blades. And it was it was difficult to to actually um, weed a knife like this out. For instance, you look at Cold Steel, they have 
a Chris. I do not have a Chris blade with the titanium handle. I know that there's one that I know of out there uh, designed by Tiguas, which I'd love to get, uh, but I haven't gotten that. So it was hard to resist putting, say, this, which is my most exotic folding knife blade in there. But but this is more based on my luxury knives, my titanium handled knives with the fancy steel and exotic blade. So uh, each one of these kind of has two. So each one of these blade styles, I have two different representations for. First is Tonto. And here is uh, probably the most beautiful American Tonto in my collection, American style Tonto. This is the K2 from Riot Knives, deeply hollow ground, uh, straight there with a with that flat chisel front. But that, that flat, flat chisel front has a beautiful curve there. So overall, it looks kind of half Japanese, half American. Nice long swedge on top. And of course, the whole look of the handle, it looks like a dragon. This was my second choice handle, but uh, I really fell for it once I got it and became uh, grateful that this is the one that I ended up with. When they first came out, they had three style handles. Two of them were just two different color combos of a sort of katana looking handle. And then this one looks like a dragon to me. So uh, Tonto A, or number one, is the Riot K2. And number two is the, can only use my right hand, sorry, <laughs> is this one here. This is the, the Chris Reeve Knives Umnumzan Tonto. This has a lot going on for a Tonto. So you have the, the hollow ground main, but that main has a gentle belly to it, gentle curve to it to aid in, in uh, shearing uh, type action. But the tip is different in that it is just a chisel tip. The whole tip is bevel. The whole tip is the edge. And so it's a zero ground tip, very different from this. And um, I love them both. If I had to choose one, I would I would say I can't. It's Sophie's choice here. Um, I like them both a lot. This to me is very, very robust. You can get quite detailed with that chisel uh, point. You know exactly where that edge is all the time. This also has sort of a double peak setup and a thumb swale that I like a lot because it allows you to really horse down on whatever material you're, you're digging into. This, of course, you would do with carving. You wouldn't have your fingers like this going through cardboard or anything that you're actually going all the way through. Uh, but it just gives you a great platform to plow, uh, to plow your blade in with. Also, the handle here. Uh, this one I, I bought from, uh, what was his name? Um, a gentleman who used to show up to... Uh, Thursday Night Knives, it, so it came worn in, beautiful snail trails on this uh, nice titanium handle. I love the handle on this, interesting lock setup, doesn't look like it should be comfortable. Like, look at that lock, standing proud there with the little scoop out, making it even kind of sharper on the edge, uh, but yeah, I've got to do it with my right hand, but it's actually super comfortable in hand. This this knife is kind of a mystery in that sense. Uh, also, I love that the cross hatching. So two beautiful exotic bladed handles, exotic meaning they're not just standard draw points. They're uh, ethnographic riffs uh, or ethnographic mashups. All right, next up, coming from Poland is a something called the Ishtar. So this is the Herman Knives Ishtar. Uh, Herman Knives is a super high-end manufacturer in um, um Poland, I shouldn't say manufacturer. I mean, it's like a custom knife company. Um, they, I guess to me, they kind of remind me of Olamic. They make all sorts of custom knives. Not that you're calling them necessarily and saying, make me this custom knife or that custom knife, but they do all sorts of variations on their designs. Uh, this one is the Ishtar and named so because of that uh, dramatic tapering uh, Persian style blade there. Very thin. Uh, full flat ground blade, very thin. This is a great food knife, oddly enough. Uh, I've used this to to prep salads and um, not because I had to, but because it was in my pocket and I wanted to try it out. Yeah, and that blade is excellent for that. Um, yeah, you're prepping salads with your high-end um, Polish tactical flipper. Uh, but I mean, what else am I going to do with it? I'm not going out and getting tactical. Uh, this, however, is uh, wood. I'm, I'm waiting for the next time I have to wear a suit. Uh, this will be it. My lifestyle does not uh, deter does not uh, require me to wear a suit often. 
But next time I do, hopefully it's not a funeral and I will carry this because it's nice and light. It's beautiful. It's classy. It's got this gorgeous, unique look with that gravel road pattern, text, texture pattern. Uh, very highly lightened on the inside is that titanium and has a great sound. I'm going to open this in front of the mic, see if you can hear it resonate. Bing. It's like a C, C sharp. Just kidding. I don't know what it is, but uh, so beautiful handle almost on this one. Uh, it's almost like the handle's more exotic than the blade, but you have a really nice upswept blade here as shown before just now. Here's another one. So there's an, another exotic blade. This is something we can count on from uh, Dirk Pinkerton is interesting, exotic blades, oftentimes, um, as I mentioned, um, ethnographically inspired. So this uh, this Persian, of course, is a pretty broad one. It has a a, a high, somewhat high height, or, or more of a saber ground um, flat. So ro more robust, say, than this Herman knife, uh, because of that blade geometry. S ninety V. Here you have M three ninety. What do you think of Persian blades? I know uh, they get a lot of shade because of the point placement, um, but I don't really actually in practice find it difficult even with an upswept blade like this to use that tip now maybe if i were using it all day long and opening up boxes all day long maybe i would uh, fatigue or or tire of that and want a warren cliff but uh so far it hasn't been an issue uh and i do like the looks of of most persian blades all right next up also one i just showed you but this is uh this is the dramatic recurve or kukri section here is the dirk pinkerton uh, kami or dirk pinkerton and uh, artisan cutlery kami um so you can see uh for, well from the name kami it's inspired by uh, kukri makers and such and the kukri shape of the blade with the downward tip however that tip is center line when you look at it as i just mentioned deep belly and then recurve evoking kukri and then you have uh the the super ergonomics here uh, this doesn't remind me so much of a kukri. Uh, this is this is where he departs from the kukri design, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but that's cool. There, <laughs> that's what I like about these kind of ethnographic mashups. Now, here's a kukri shape uh, that's a little more uh, true to traditional form. This is the uh, Jason Knight designed elements distributed Fox produced MK Ultra. This is from the second run. Yeah. Uh, a number of years back now uh, but this one is probably my favorite uh, if you're looking at folders that are supposed to be kukris this is my favorite for looking like a kukri i have the uh the raja you know series i have a couple other knives this one to me looks the most like a kukri and then that pommel as i was discussing the pommel here uh being so great for reverse grip because you have that uh thumb placement there that bird's beak also great for the pinky uh, on a slash, but here you have the more traditional style kukri handle that flares out. Uh, so also excellent because, uh, but, but where this accelerates is not so much uh, for the bird's beak, which is good, that, that holds you in, but it's this uh, swell up that allows, you see that on a lot of choppers, the swell up on the top back of the pommel allows for uh, the blade to kind of bounce back when you're exerting force downward and it hits here, uh, it's not going to continue <laughs> that motion and slip out of your hand because that handle curves back up and arrests the motion. It's also good for pulling stuff out. If you had this jam between uh, ribs of something or someone and you were pulling it out, uh, this here would be uh, a really great way to do so because you have palm engagement and pinky engagement. This, like the Kami, and like a lot of them in this, are half and half. So half titanium, half micarta. I love that. Love that. And uh, I love recurves. No problem with recurves. If you if you have a problem resharpening recurves, just find something. Just get a stone or a, um, a diamond sharpener with a rounded surface. There are plenty of them out there, like, like, a, you know, like a steel from your kitchen knives, but with ceramic or diamond and you can sharpen these all day long and have no issue look at those they're beautiful just to look to get look at together the uh the mk ultra and the kami all right next up i could have called this hawkbill i could have called this 
whatever, but I'm, I'm just going to call it Pikal. Uh, but we have some super unique shapes here. Here is the Shielden Knives uh, XL Scythe. And this is uh, designed by DC Blades. DC Blades, Tier 1 Gear Reviews. And his, his design partner, um, man, they make some cool, cool knives. Old Squirrel uh, Knives, I, I think, is a part of that design team. I, I believe he is the other half of it. Uh, this is because uh, he made the original custom sides, uh, fixed blade versions of this. This is a, an extremely comfortable and extremely nasty, uh, but also just beautiful to look at, Pical style knife. What's a Pical style knife, you say? Uh, that is a knife that is intended to be used with the tip down and the edge in, in a defensive manner, kind of uh, like a cat's claw, punctures and pulls, puncture, pull. Uh, that's the that's the theory behind this knife and this style knife. Yeah, if this is a hawk bill. This is a Pical style knife. Uh, this is a fruit knife, extreme, uh, whatever you want to call it. But it has that um, Pical use. Uh, the other one is also a Dirk. Yeah, this is a heavily Dirk Pinkerton uh, list here because of his well, his love of exotic knives. This is his version of the folding Pical in the inversion. The inversion first uh, saw light of day with Kaiser knives, and it didn't have the ring, and it had a, a much more of a Americanized, reversed Americanized Tonto shape, less gradual Warncliffe here. So this hawk bill is more like a Warncliffe hawk bill, but also, you know, in the Pical setup. Titanium. This has that nice. Um, Oh, what do you call it? Orange peel texture comes with two different clips, this sculpted titanium or the bent spring clip. And you can remove the ring if the ring isn't your thing. And also the wave. You can remove the wave and put on a different thumb disc that this shipped with. This was a custom. I don't want to say custom. It was a pre-order thing. And oh, crown spine. And uh, so if you were on the order, you got it. If not, not. Um, so hopefully he comes back out with this. I know a lot of people uh, loved this and wanted to get their, their hands on it. By the way, perfect ring placement. You don't have to do anything uh, with your fist to alter it. You don't have to alter your grip at all with your fist to make that work. Some rings are jankily placed. That one is not. All right. Next up are clip points. Clip points. You're like, what's exotic about a clip point? Well... I'm going to start with this one. This is the Hinderer Knives XM24 Bowie. Uh, to me, this is a pretty exotic looking Bowie. You have a long clip that evokes the Spanish clip, and we'll get to that in a minute. But you also have that double peak with the thumb swale, which uh, looks to me a lot like the Mac V SOG from the Vietnam era. So this, I, I think that Hinderer's Bowie shape is one of the most uh, fetching in the business, whether it's this on the on the xm24 the four inch now i find the three and a half inch to look a little stubby so we're talking the four inch or the or or the ranch bowie the big the fixed blade one um i think that they look unique i think that they look exotic i think they look they're like um the same but different they look like knives you've seen before uh but to me that is an exotic looking um or um what do you call it? Bowie uh, clip point style blade. And I think maybe we take it for granted. We've seen this design a lot, especially in the XM18, three and a half inch version. But when you look at it in the four inch version, you really see the full expression of that blade I'm trying to get the light on all the facets. And, and here's a more extreme version to me. Uh, this again, Dirk Pinkerton. This is the last one you're going to see. <laughs> uh, this is his night horse, his modern take on the Navaja. The Navaja I showed earlier. Um, with this uh, Spanish, yeah, you can see the you can see the echoes here. So this has that Spanish clip point with that long, long, come somewhat flat clip. It's more curved here, but it still has a long, flat portion here. Here uh, on the night horse, Dirk uh, takes the. The hallmarks of a uh, Spanish clip point, the long, flat clip, and oftentimes they have this downward reaching edge with a with a full belly and then a flat front. He does all that to an extreme on this knife. And um, well, 
he's designed one of my favorite clip point blades ever in this knife but also it's a it's an exotic take and a change of the clip point blade that is exciting to me uh, i look at this and it's it is exotic to me uh so love this love the horn shaped handle the full titanium handle it's nice and uh he i don't want to say heavy but it's it's robust this one here is a prototype that uh I bought from Dirk when he when he was uh, selling some prototypes off, and man, I love this thing. This is a great knife. I'm not sure if Asymmetrical is still making this one. Um, it was an exclusive at uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They also have this was like 150 whatever titanium S35 VN. They also have a $30 version of this knife that is so well worth the money, and I gave mine away. Uh, they might still have one. Um, but if you like this design and, and you want to spend only $30, they make a killer version of this for, for a song, a literal song. Actually, it's not literal. but uh, So those are my exotic clip points. Last up, I want to talk about the humble drop point. Drop point, Bob, I thought you said that was the whole point of this. There are no drop points here. These are exotic blade shapes. Well, these two you might... Uh, you might get with me on, you might agree with me on. This first one is the Crystal Aurora. Crystal Knives Aurora from Russia. This is designed by, uh, or actually Belar uh, Belarus, I believe. This is designed by uh, Ivan Braganets. And that blade shape, yeah, it is a super acute spear point style uh, blade, but look at that giant fuller on both sides. This is evocative of an exotic blade called the Yakut, uh, uh, a traditional Russian blade called the Yakut. So you look at this thing, it is so modern. It's so space age. You have the titanium, you have the S35 VN, uh, the, the jimping kind of all over, all the micro milling and the cool kind of uh, angular yet organic shape. Feels great in hand and all that. Uh, and then when you pop it open, you have this um, traditional... Uh, historic blade. I think it's really cool. The Yakut. So exotic spear point in, in, in that sense. And then the last one here is exotic because you never see this except in maybe three or four other folders. And that is a straight up dagger, like a real legit dagger, like a uh, symmetrical spear point with both edges sharp as a dagger should be. Um, Beautiful titanium handle on this one. Of course, it has to be wide enough to accommodate that full blade with that secondary edge, because if you close it up, you obviously can't have it sitting proud of the handle like you can here, because you would have a sharp edge. So takes a lot of uh, design work. Also, they're exotic because they're illegal in many, many places. Uh, they're not the most perfectly legal uh, knives out there because of their double-edgedness. Um, this one happens to have a really cool kind of large Tesla coil on the clip and a sort of beautiful uh, space age coffin shaped handle. So that's it. That, that is my uh, list of exotic blades with titanium handles. Like I said, I want to get to a couple of these Tiguas designs. He's a very interesting designer. I've been following a while, but haven't gotten any of his knives yet. Um, he has a Chris and it has a titanium handle. So I'm going to have to jump on that. Speaking of jumping on things, be sure uh, not to jump on the Thursday Night Knives live stream. If you're hearing this the day it's dropping, uh, we will not have a show on August 15th, 2024. We will resume broadcast on the 22nd and we will do so with the Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway. Oh, look at that. Pretty cool. All right. Thanks for joining me on the Knife Junkie podcast. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.